welcome to Eyes and Rampers Private Equity Dealbook Podcast Series. I'm your host, Alana margulies Steyerman, and with me today is Andrew Bernstein, Senior Managing Director and Head of Private Equity at Capital Dynamics, a $14 billion independent global asset management firm focused on private assets, including private equity, specifically primaries, secondaries, and co-investments, as well as clean energy. Today, Andrew will share with us his outlook for deal-making in private equity, including opportunities and challenges, and also touch upon how the climate has impacted transactions. Further, he will share the best practices for companies contemplating buy-side and sell-side transactions, the due diligence process for M&A activity, and more. Hi, Andrew. Thank you so much for being with me today. Thanks very much for having me. It's my pleasure to be here. Absolutely, Andrew. So to kick off the conversation, tell us a little about your background and how you got to where you are today. Sure. So uh, without going too far back, um, you know, before I came to Capital Dynamics, uh, I'd spent the first decade of this century, I spent that, uh, that period of time uh, in mezzanine debt. And then as we got into the financial crisis, there weren't a whole lot of new deals getting done, new buyouts to do. And so I yeah, started looking around for something else, and I got introduced to Capital Dynamics. I hadn't been familiar with this firm up to that point. Uh, but as I learned more, I, I was really intrigued by a lot of the stuff that Capital Dynamics w- was doing, uh, really pioneering a lot of areas uh, you know, within private equity, you know, first in, in securitization of private equity, uh, and then really being one of the first players in both secondaries and in co-investments. So I made the jump over here uh, back in 2009, and it's been off to the races ever since. Thanks for sharing your journey, Andrew. So in terms of focus on private equity, primary, secondaries, co-investments, I would love for you to share your outlook for deal making in those areas. Sure. You know, I'll take each one of those separately and they're, they're somewhat interconnected. You know, it's been a, a difficult fundraising environment over the past uh, few years, uh, largely because there haven't been a lot of exits. And so, so LPs have been uh, short on capital to make new commitments. What that's led to is, is many, many managers being in the market trying to raise capital all at the same time. And so for our primaries business, it's a challenge on the one hand, because there are you know, a lot of our existing managers that uh, we want to continue to re-up with. But with so many back in the market at once, uh, and us really not trying to change our normal cadence of investing in a balanced and measured way you know, across vintage years, it's forcing us into some pretty difficult decisions. You know, we can't necessarily even do all of the re-ups we want to do and have room for, for new managers at the same time. I think it will result in us uh, you know, being you know, super selective and having a pretty strong selection of managers that we ultimately choose to commit to during this period where there are so many managers uh, you know, in the market at once, but it creates some difficult situations. For secondaries, the, uh, there, there's a knock-on effect from this uh, difficult fundraising period where managers that are having difficulty and taking longer to get their funds raised, they are beginning to invest their funds during their fundraising period. And by the time they get toward their final close, uh, in some cases, you know, half the fund has already been invested and some of those deals are already marked up. And so what that does is it creates what we call early secondaries or late primaries where we can make a, a secondary commitment in a primary that has all the attributes of, uh, of secondaries. And at the same time, yeah, the other thing that we've seen in, in the secondary market is the emergence of continuation vehicles becoming a, a uh, very significant part of the market where managers finding that the, the price available in the market for assets they want to exit uh, is not attractive. So instead, they put that asset into a continuation vehicle in order to create an exit ag- opportunity for the, for the investors in their fund. And then that allows us to, you know, through a secondary, invest in an asset that wouldn't otherwise be available 
uh, typically, you know, very strong, you know, attractive assets that you know, really, you know, beacons of their industry that, that managers just want to continue to own. We're very pleased to be seeing those opportunities in secondaries land. And then the the effect of the difficult fundraising market on co-investment has also uh, been, been interesting where on the supply side, the supply of co-investment opportunities has gone way up uh, as managers have less capital to deploy uh, when it's more difficult to fundraise. They're tapping into the co-investment market more, but then at the same time, the uh, the same LPs that are not as active investing in funds also aren't as active investing in co-investment deals. And so with supply up uh, and demand down, uh, what that's translated to for investors like ourselves who continue to be uh, and very active in co-investments is sort of an embarrassment of riches when it comes to deal funnel and the amount of opportunities that we're seeing you know, come across the transom over the past uh, year or two. Uh, it's really exploded and you know, uh, is allowing us to be uh, you know, that much more selective uh, in, in, in raising the bar and, and choosing which deals to ultimately commit to. Andrew, as a follow-up to that question, I would highly welcome your thoughts on some of the specific greatest opportunities you see in those spaces and why? Yeah, you know, uh, one of the themes that we've been investing you know, behind is the, the reshoring of manufacturing back to the United States. If during COVID and, and then the supply chain crisis, uh, you know, what we saw was that uh, you know, this country is, is really far too dependent on countries and faraway places for, for many key you know, inputs and, and products, you know, things like pharmaceuticals and, and semiconductors. And so there's been a big push to, to bring that manufacturing back on shore here in the United States. And so you know, many of the investments that we have done over the past uh, year or so have, have really been benefiting from, from that tailwind. Andrew, on the other hand, what are some of the greatest challenges you face in this space? I know early in our conversation, you touched upon fundraising, but I'd welcome your thoughts on other hurdles you're up against. Yeah, that's an interesting question. You know, one of the things that we bump up into, particularly in our co-investment business, is the presence of what I would call you know, less sophisticated investors in the market. What I mean by that is uh, you know, when we're making a co-investment, you know, we're, we're pretty rigorous in, in our demands of the manager in terms of the information we require, uh, the access to the management team. And in many cases, what they'll tell us is that you know, the other you know, co-investors that they're talking with are not asking for all those same things. And you know, why do we need you know, all this special treatment? From our perspective, we're not really asking for anything out of the ordinary. They're basic things that we really need to know about the, the company that we're contemplating making an investment in. But, but we find that a lot of other co-investors just really rely quite heavily on the manager itself and trust them to be making a good investment if they've already made a commitment to you know, that particular fund. For us, you know, we do all of our own work. So it makes it more difficult for us to get our work done. I'd say that nine times out of 10, you know, we do get what we need. And if we don't, you know, we simply you know, are, aren't going to proceed. That's not our style to invest uh, you know, blind like that. But uh, more often than not, you know, managers do appreciate you know having a you know a more sophisticated 